With my new tarot series, the Learn Tarot series, you're going to learn how to read the cards without memorizing anything. Get comfortable, get cozy, get your tarot journal out, get your tarot cards out because you are going to learn tarot once and for all. Yes, everything you need to know to start reading tarot. Everything. Hi, my name is Joe Montalione. I'm a modern mystic and metaphysical misfit and founder of the Tarot Mysticism Academy, an international school for advanced tarot training, mystical philosophy, and a million and one other things. I'm super excited to be working with you today and to get you reading tarot. So what will you need for this course? Four things. One, you're going to need a tarot journal. That can be a virtual journal like Google Docs or a physical journal. You need one. Don't skip this. Seriously, my tarot journal is now hundreds and hundreds of pages, like I could probably publish it. The second thing you're going to need is a tarot deck, obviously. The third thing, I've made a couple guides that will support your learning in this course, as well as give you more information for the next step in your tarot education beyond. You can download those guides in the links in the description below. And finally, the last thing you need is your attention. It might sound corny, but tarot doesn't exist outside of you. The art form of tarot is a subjective discipline. All the methods, all the techniques, all the skills are things you generate and grow within you, within your attention and your focus. That's why card number one is the magician. It's all about attention, focus. So if you have your tarot deck, if you have your journal, if you have the guides and you're ready to give me your attention, we can begin. Let's do it. Now, you might know the elements already, but I highly recommend you go through this thoroughly because what I'm going to describe here is the foundation for a lot of more advanced tarot work. I will also have another video I will link below on a more advanced and mystical interpretation of the four elements. But don't go there until you've really taken your time to move through this video because there's a lot here to cover. The four elements were popularized in the West by a philosopher named Empedocles. They found their way into tarot through various interesting philosophical and esoteric roots, but have become a way through which we can organize our experiences, especially our human life experiences. As opposed to what? Uh, we'll get to that in another video. So the four elements are life, and what aspects of life do they represent? The big four. How do I get paid? How do I get laid? How do I stay unafraid? And how do I enjoy life's parade? The four elements, fire, water, air, and earth, are represented by the four suits of the tarot. The suit of wands, the suit of cups, the suit of swords, and the suit of pentacles, discs, or coins. I am using the Rider Waite Smith deck in this course. You can use any tarot deck you want. Most tarot decks are based on this Rider Waite Smith system. Many tarot decks are also based on the Thoth tarot tradition, and I have courses on that on my channel. And of course, there's the Marseille tradition, and I'm sure many others. But the cool thing is once you understand the four elements, you could really use them with almost any deck. We're starting with the suit of wands, which is the element of fire. The suit of wands shows us the part of our lives that are actively creative. Now, I'm saying actively creative because the thing is, everything is a creative process. You watching this video now is a creative process. You're interpreting, you're thinking, you're sensing, you're processing, you are creating an experience for you. It's important to notice that the whole tarot deck is an expression symbolically, archetypally, esoterically of a creative process. And that creative process is you and your life. That creative process starts symbolically with a suit of wands and it is active because it is what initiates the whole process. The suit of wands shows us our life purpose, our career, our passions, our desires, our will, our goals, and generally what we want to achieve for ourselves. It often shows us what we are meant to do, what we are meant to contribute to this world. And because of that, oftentimes it manifests as career, as job, as business. The suit of cups, which represents water, on the other hand, is passive creativity. I use the word passive creativity to give the context of reactive creativity in the sense that in the suit of cups, we're looking at collaboration. The suit of cups and the element of water symbolize our relationships, 
uh, the people in our world, our family, our love, our emotions. Unlike the suit of wands where we are initiating and actively directing a creative force, in the suit of cups we are taking that creativity and working with it through others. Whether that's falling in love, making a family, collaborating with friends. In the suit of cups, we are not alone. And so it requires more listening and responsiveness and responsibility. Now, something really cool happens when these two elements get together. And this is what you don't learn as much in tarot books, so pay attention. When you have will and you have personal desire and you have a creative process that you initiate whether that's your life purpose or a business or a talent that you want to cultivate when you take that and you combine it with other people with relationships with collaborators that appear in the suit of cups you start to form a personal identity and that identity is represented by the suit of swords and the element of air the element of air is the element of the mind. It's the element of logic and the intellect and the ego. And in a larger scale, it's the element of society, which is itself a large scale expression of the mind. Like if you study the fluid dynamics of cities and urban planning and engineering and stuff, you will see that that's like a model of the mind, the intellect. So in the suit of swords, we begin to build an identity and uh, a set of ideals and belief systems around what we are creating and desiring and who we are creating with. Now, that set of ideals, that set of goals, identifications, and even ego begins to shape our material world. And our material world is expressed by the suit of pentacles and the element of earth. The gag is everything you experience physically in your world, including your body, including the things around you, including your financial situation, has a direct relationship with your mind, with your thoughts. I'll get into all of that in more detail on my other video on the mystical analysis of the four elements. But for now, we can just notice how the physical world, the material world, is either a result of your mental world or at least has a strong correlation, if you don't want to go that far. The suit of pentacles representing Earth also represents our physical body, our wellness, our health, and also money. It symbolizes money because money is a, an abstract measurement of stuff, of material, of effort and energy and work, which is another attribution of the suit of pentacles. Now the next exercise I'm going to teach you is going to show you how to understand the meaning of over half the tarot deck without memorizing anything. What I'm about to teach you is something I developed to help new tarot readers start reading the cards without having to memorize a million and one things without having to memorize symbols and history and systems and numbers and all this stuff. All you have to know, like I said, are the four elements. Now, this works for the minor arcana. The majors we're going to get to in another video. Two steps. Step one, you're going to notice the suit symbol and recall the element. Step two, notice the relationship between that suit symbol and the rest of the card. Where is that suit symbol in relation to the other symbols of the card? How is that suit symbol incorporated in the illustration? That relationship will give you the context to the subject matter of the element, which makes the divinatory meaning. It's so simple, you're gonna love it. Let's look at an example. The two of wands. Step one, notice the suit symbol. We see the wands and recall the element, fire. We know that wands and fire represents career, life purpose, passion, will. Now, let's notice the relationship of the suit symbol with the scene. We notice somebody holding one of the wands and the other wand is bolted to a castle. The person holding the first wand is also holding a globe 
and he has his sights set onto some location. You could also interpret him as looking out into the distance, uh, thinking of something, looking in a specific direction. So we might say that this is somebody who, holding firmly to their career, to their passion, to their life purpose, is now setting their sights on a new location, on a new goal. We can interpret this wand being bolted to a castle as symbolizing somebody who has firmly set up their career uh, in a successful way, who has built something for themselves that brings them power, that brings them protection, that brings them direction. Another way to interpret it is that the energy of the wand, which symbolizes fire and career and purpose, is running through his hands, to his eyes, and into his mind's eye, into his intention, into his goal, wherever he is looking at, whatever he is focused on. And notice how I didn't use any esoterica, I didn't use any Kabbalah, any numerology, all I'm using is the suit symbol and the scene. You can also use this method to draw in some more esoteric influence without having to study a bunch of occult books. I'll show you how. You can notice that on this crenellation of the castle, there appears to be a red rose and a white lily. You can interpret this as uh, a number of things, and everything from opposites to sex magic to passion and purity. You could take any of those things and say that the balance of these two extremes draws an energy going through the wand, through his own passion, through his own will, through his own purpose, and allows him to set his sights somewhere on the globe. In part two of the series, we'll be going through the suit of wands, using this technique to generate divinatory information for each card. So make sure you subscribe and look out for that. If you have any questions, let me know, and I look forward to seeing you in part two. Much love.